For toponymy nerds like me, place names are a fantastic way of finding out about the past. By tracing the evolution and development of place names, we can really build up a picture of the various peoples who helped build ancient Britain. And with that in mind, we're going to look at something very specific and slightly odd. Why there's traces of Welsh words in Yorkshire place names. So with that in mind, let's look at this part of Yorkshire's hidden history. Churches, battles, kings and queens, factories and big machines, castles, forts and in-betweens, the stories that are told. So I've been a little bit disingenuous with the title, but I'll explain all that. This video is going to be mostly about the Britonic or the Brythonic language, which was spoken by the Celts in Britain before the Romans came. This is the shared ancestor for most of the languages spoken in the British Isles, and it explains why English and Welsh, which are two seemingly completely different languages, actually have a lot of similarities. It's because they all have the same roots. Now, I'm not going to pretend that there's a whole load of Welsh words in Yorkshire place names, but there are just enough for it to be mildly interesting. And it's also important to point out that etymology is a deeply contentious topic. There's no concrete or set in stone origin for a certain place name. And in fact, on a number of occasions, I've challenged a traditional thought on the development of a name by offering an alternative which I feel is perhaps more realistic. So with that in mind, let's crack on. Common Britonic was spoken in most of Britain by the Celts before the Romans came. When they invaded, it mixed with a bit of Latin, and when they'd left, it started to split into various other languages. It split into Welsh, Cornish, Cumbric, which was spoken from the Firth of Forth in Scotland to North Yorkshire and Lancashire, Breton in the Brittany region of France, and influenced a little bit of Pictish in Scotland. These languages, although they would all end up different from each other, nevertheless had the same parent and would share many of the same features. Perhaps the best place to start is with a name that sounds the most Welsh, Penny Ghent, a peak in the North York Moors. That's because it is Welsh. Pen means head and it appears all over the country. Places like Pendle in Lancashire, Penrith in Cumbria, Penzance in Cornwall, Peniston and Penel in Yorkshire and of course Pengam in Wales. Noticing, of course, that these places are the places where Cumbric, Cornish and Welsh were spoken. Cumbric and Cornish both went extinct as languages, which means that apart from Breton, Welsh is the only surviving descendant of the Bretonic language. It's also the oldest language of the British Isles. Next up is the Otley Shevin, a beautiful ridge overlooking the town of Otley. The word Shevin comes from the Bretonic Kefin, meaning ridge or high land, and is preserved exactly in modern-day Welsh in places like the village of Kefin Moor. Warning! The next name is one in which I have diverged from the standard etymology and offered my own. So, I will warn the viewer that I might be talking complete and utter rubbish, and I accept full responsibility if I get this wrong. There's a village in West Yorkshire called Aberford, Many sites list the origin of this name as being Anglo-Saxon, potentially translating to Eadberg's Ford. But I disagree. Abba appears all over Welsh, Cornish, Cumbric and Pictish names and means the mouth of the river. This, of course, leads to the names of Aberystwyth, Aberdeen, Abergavenny and Aberuthven. Considering the close proximity of West Yorkshire to the area in which these languages were spoken, and considering that Aberford actually lies on a river, it seems reasonable to suggest that this is actually the origin of the name. Next up is Elmet. It was once a kingdom between the 5th and 7th centuries, and the name comes from the Brythonic Elfed, the precise meaning of which is unknown, but it's still used as a name in Wales. The Kingdom of Elmet does, in fact, have a number of close ties with Wales. An early Christian inscription in Gwynedd reads Aliotus the Elmetian lies here. The Brythonic poet Taliesin, who is one of the most well-loved medieval Welsh poets, wrote extensively on the history of the kings in the north, including the kings of Elmet. The kings of Elmet feature prominently in medieval Welsh literature as ancestral figures, and it shows a unique twining of history between these two places. Thanks for watching, and of course there will be more Yorkshire place name videos in the future.